Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Dr. Chen, who is the medical director of the Structural Heart Program at Saddleback Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for joining me. I am part of the cardiology department at Saddleback. Um, uh, my specific role is as the medical director of the Structural Heart Program at Saddleback Medical Center. That is correct. Thank you for joining us. Now, I've never heard of a, of a mitra clip. Is this something that's fairly new or has it been around for a while? So it was, it's fairly new to clinical practice. It's only been around for a few years. It was originally developed about 10, 15 years ago. So in, in terms of heart treatment, it is a relatively new procedure, yes. Okay, so at what point, uh, well, I guess, I guess let's start with, mit like what is a mitral valve regurgitation? Because is that when you would use something like this? Exactly. So the mitral clip was invented to treat a condition known as mitral regurgitation. So the first thing to know is that the heart itself um, has different rooms and between the rooms there's different doors and we call those doors the valves and there's four valves in there and they're meant to keep the blood going in one particular direction. So they need to open well but also close well to make sure the blood doesn't go backwards. So the mitral regurgitation is um, a condition of the mitral valve itself where the blood leaks. So you may have heard the term leaky valve. And so that's when the mitral valve doesn't close properly and the blood leaks backwards in the wrong direction. Yeah, so it's a very common, it's gotten to be a very common problem. It's thought that probably one in 10 people over the age of 75 um, have moderate to severe mitral regurgitation. Yes. So is it, is it just age that's causing something like this to happen or are there other things? Oh, it's a combination of many different things. So there's a lot of reasons why the mitral valve may not work properly. Some of them are congenital uh, in the sense that someone was born with them. Um, most of the times it's a condition that develops as the years go by. Either there's two major types of problems. One is if you imagine the, the doors, sometimes there's a problem with the door itself. So sometimes the tethers that hold the door in a certain position break. Sometimes the door itself um, becomes damaged. Mm -hmm. And then that's, there's a second type of problem where it's um, the problem of a leaky mitral valve comes from not the door, but more like the door frame. So you may have heard of enlarged hearts and that's a situation where it actually stretches the door frame open and there's nothing wrong with the door but you can imagine a door that's trying to close in a frame that's been stretched open still doesn't won't be able to close that door so yes there's a a wide range of reasons why people may develop a door that just doesn't close properly okay and then is this the only kind of procedure that is appropriate for that issue well there's a lot of ways to treat mitral regurgitation. And it all depends on basically how bad the leakiness is and how someone is doing with it. Um, if it's not too bad, usually we're able to help a patient feel better just by using medicines. And so we'll adjust medicines, we'll try different medicines to see if we can help them do better. Um, as it gets worse, then we start talking about the possible need to actually go inside and fix the door. Okay. And traditionally, what we were talking about is open heart surgery, which is, um, as you can imagine, a big deal. And so sometimes it is necessary for a surgeon to just go inside, be able to get their hands on the mitral valve and just fix, either try to fix what's wrong or potentially even just replace the entire apparatus inside with you know, it's called a mitral valve replacement. Okay. okay. Uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of patients who are either high risk um, for surgery or basically um, unable to be, uh, undergo heart surgery, which is a pretty a big deal. And for that reason, we, in, um, invent, we in the field invented the mitral clip. And that's for basically patients who are not, it's not a good idea to put them through heart surgery. Right. So, so tell me what the mitral clip procedure is. Yeah. So um, I think you may have a picture of, um, of the clip on, on your side. So it basically, I tell people it's like a very, very small clothespin. And of course, it's, it's more complicated than a wooden, the wooden clothespins. It's a 
a very small, less than the size of a dime. Um, it's made of metal. It's a little clip that we can put in through a minimally invasive procedure. So the entire procedure itself is what we call minimally invasive. Um, I can go in through a small little incision in the groin in the vein, follow the vein highway up to the heart, and under very particular imaging techniques we have, um, known as echocardiography as well as, as, well as fluoroscopy, um, we can maneuver the clip right where the door flaps are and essentially pull them together so that they don't that unnecessarily leak and make them function well again. Right. Wow. That's amazing. Let me ask you, if somebody decided, you know, oh, I'll be fine. I don't, I don't need the clip or I don't need to have open heart surgery. What would actually happen to that patient? Yeah. So their, um, the symptoms, they'll first, well, first you won't notice anything as the leakiness gets worse and worse. But the problem with the leakiness is that, um, it makes the heart work very inefficiently. And so the heart has to work harder to push the blood in one direction when a lot of it is leaking backwards. Over time, it can cause the heart to enlarge and then patients can develop and put a lot more strain on the heart and the lungs and then cause them to have symptoms of what we call generally call heart failure. So symptoms of that are, are symptoms such as fatigue, shortness of breath, sometimes lightheadedness or dizziness, um, low energy, swelling the feet and ankles, sometimes irregular heartbeats. And so, you know, as the disease progresses, these symptoms will get worse and worse. And although we can try to use medicines to help things get better, uh, eventually it gets to the point where the patient says, this is not acceptable. I, I, I need to do something else to get this better. I see. And, and, and then what, uh, how would somebody find out if they were a candidate for this type of procedure? Right. So to make this diagnosis, there's a few different um, ways we go about it. We always start with um, the patient's story, we, what we call the patient's history. And so a lot of times their first, the, our first clue that someone is having something wrong with this mitral valve is when they get those symptoms we, we just discussed. And so they'll see it, uh, maybe a general doctor and They'll be, they'll be seen to have these symptoms and the doctor will say, well, maybe you have heart failure. Why do you have heart failure? Maybe you need to see a cardiologist. Um, some things we can find out just from the history as well as the physical exam. Um, so physical exams such as we listen to the heart, this leaky valve actually makes a sound called, we call a murmur. So sometimes sure. you may, patients may be told, oh, wow, you have a murmur. What's going on here? You may need to see a cardiologist. And so when we see the patient, um, one of the best ways we have to make this diagnosis is a, a, something we call the ultrasound of the heart, an echocardiogram. Mm -hmm. And so we are able to take great pictures of the heart and see exactly how the heart is structured and functioning. And so we get great pictures of the valves themselves and we're able to say, oh, your valves are working fine or no, you, you have a problem with your mitral valve. It is, it is very leaky. You have moderate, maybe severe mitral regurgitation. And once we can use that to make the diagnosis, then we can start talking about what to do about that problem. Well, that's great. I mean, it sounds like there's lots of options and there's sort of a lead up to, you know, whether or not you would need the mitra clip. So it's, it's good that you have options for preventative so it doesn't get so bad that you have to jump right to the procedure. So wonderful information. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Chen. I appreciate you taking the time. Well, thank you for having me on. All right. And we'll be right back after this. 